Hello, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the Bee Gees of board game review shows. Because we've got Game Fever, Game Fever. You know how to do it. We can do anything. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking of a band that's history, today we're going to take a look at history. History of the world from Z Man Games. Mythology to Roman lore as well. There's a creature kind of creepy, but he's got some sex appeal. He stands at nine for seven, and you never hear him talk. He's only got one eye, but it really likes to rock. They say he brought the feeling that's the one if he did. Now be so judgmental about the Cyclops kid. He's got a tiny temper and an itty bitty fuse. If you're the one. In History of the World from Z-Man Games, three to six players are going to attempt to ride the wave of history as empires spring up and to decline and topple all over the globe. Let's take a look at how this game plays. Now, there are five epochs in History of the World, five different rounds of the game, and each round is going to have a number of round cards and event cards. What's going to happen is, at the beginning of the game, you're going to randomly select kind of player order, which is also your score. A uh, person with the lowest scores, you know, obviously one, two, three, and four. Well, the person with the highest score is going to pick an event card and then pass the other event cards around uh, to the other players. The person with the lowest score is going to pick the first Empire card and then pass those Empire cards around the other direction. Now, once everybody has their card, each Epoch card on the back shows what order your Empire plays. So, you know, if you're you know, the Romans or the British or, or what have you, you're going to go ahead and activate in a certain order depending on the Epoch. Now the first thing you do is on your Empire card, it's going to tell you how many armies you get. You place that many armies on your card. Then it's going to tell you where your capital region is. And most empires are going to be kind of standard empires with a capital that's spread out geographically. Some like, say, you know, the Huns or the Mongols, they're going to be less centralized. They may not start with a capital. But assuming you do, you put down your capital where you start, and then you put out uh, an army in that space. And then you can go ahead and just, if there's empty spaces, you can just spread out your army. But if ever your army encounters a, another player's empire in decline, you will roll two dice as the attacker, he will roll one dice, and you'll compare the, the highest level dice. Now, if you defeat your enemy, then his uh, army is removed, you place yours there. If it's tied, you both remove your armies. But if he gets greater than you, you can lay siege. Essentially, you have a little siege catapult, a little cardboard catapult that comes out, and you can place armies on that to give you kind of plus one modifiers. But you're spending your armies almost like currency in this way to ensure success for just one particular region. Now, you'll also have your event cards. Now, sometimes event cards give you combat bonuses, or they let you perhaps take a region without combat, or other fun and interesting things that happen. But you may also have a kingdom card, in which case you would play the kingdom card before your empire card, which is like a little mini empire. It's like a small little empire that may be somewhere else completely on the board. Uh, so you're, you're going to be getting kind of your main empire, and then this kind of little smaller kingdom somewhere else on the board. Now, some empires will also come with either fleets or caravans that will let you cross otherwise impassable terrain or oceans, you know, like the Sahara Desert, um, you know, or, you know, the Atlantic Ocean. If you do that, that means essentially they make adjacency between all regions that are, that are next to that ocean or, or desert. Now, as you're spreading out your empire, one of the things you're trying to find are these resource icons. Because for every two resource icons you get, you will be able to build a, a monument, which will be important for scoring. But also, too, you may want to take over people's uh, existing cities or capital cities, in which case you would, you would lower them. The capital, actually, you would flip over so it becomes a city, in which case you can uh, then use that for scoring as well. Now, as soon as you are done with your building your empire, uh, you go ahead, you look at all those resource icons. For every two resource icons you have, you can build a monument. You have to build it in your capital, then in another city, then on a resource monument. But you build all those uh, resource monuments, and then you go ahead and move to scoring. Essentially, each space, every epoch, uh, each region of the board, rather, is going to have certain scoring conditions. If you have presence there, you get so many points. If you have domination, you have, you know, you know more than other players, you'll get so many points. If you have 
supremacy. Essentially, you have the only uh, number of uh, guys in that region, and a certain number, you get you know, all the points for that region. So you go up, you, you do that for all of your active armies, which again are standing up. Then, once you've done scoring and you've, you've placed yourself on the board where you score, then essentially your empire goes into decline, you resign your units. That means you just tip them over. So all these units are now tipped over, and the next player goes. And then he has a chance to encounter your uh, units that have been tipped over. Now, as you're spreading out during the empire phase, if you do encounter some of your previous empires that have been tipped over, you essentially can just remove one of your units to flip that one back up. So that's a way you can kind of encounter your own previous empires earlier from earlier in the game. So you're going around and around like this every game. You are playing the, the kingdom cards, the empire cards, and any you know other event cards you might have to build up your empires. And very quickly, you're going to come in contact with a lot of other players because you never know where you're going to pick up. Later in the game, if you get an empire card and somebody else already exists there, you can just remove their, their declined unit, their uh, resigned unit, and place your empire there. So you're immediately going to come into contact, or rather very quickly in this game, come into contact with these other empires. As I say, you go around and around, you build your empires, you see them decline, and at the end of every round, you are going to, at the end of every turn, rather, you are going to go ahead and score your empire. After the fifth epoch is played, once uh, everybody has gone, you see who has the most, the, the total uh, points for the game, and whoever has the highest score wins History of the World. Now that is just a very brief, brief overview of the game. There is a lot more going on here. Uh, actually, not a lot more, but there is some, some nuance here and, and some things. For instance, the the different empires may have dirt, certain advantages and special things they can do. Um, you know, if, if, if people are attacking you from sea, the defender gets advantages, and there's other advantages here and there. So there's, so there's more going on to this game, but that, in a nutshell, is the basic way it is played. Now, History of the World, this is the latest edition. This is like I want to say the 5th or 6th edition of this game. I believe it started originally in the 1990s and it's kind of been evolving uh, for you know 20 plus years. I've never played one of the earlier versions. I remember when the Avalon Hill version came out, I think once in 2003 or thereabouts, I remember seeing it and thinking it looked cool and wanting to play it, but I, you know, I wasn't really heavy into games at that point and I never did. <clears throat> so but this is a game I thought, oh, I'd like to play that. And then I just saw it, Z-Man Games of course, was bringing this out. I contacted the good people uh, there, and they sent me the copy. So uh, we went ahead and played this game, and I'm looking at it, and frankly, it looked a little simplistic to me. It looked a little too light for me, and I was kind of worried about that. As I'm reading it, I'm thinking, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of meat in this game. Uh, and then I went ahead and I played it. Now, let's be clear, this is a dice fest. This is a game about expanding. You can't really turtle in this game. It, it doesn't... I mean, just mechanically, you're not really going to be able to, and you need to grow and expand, <clears throat> and you're going to have to be challenging these other empires and constantly battling them. I do like dice fests. I do like games that where you're constantly rolling dice and having chance like that. It comes from my Axis and Allies days. I love it. Um, well, uh, this, first of all, the combat system here is really straightforward. Like I said, the attacker gets two dice, defender gets one die, all things being equal, and you're going to compare the top rolls. But there's also some other nuance here. Like I say, the defender can get some advantages at some points. The attacker uh, has the ability to, to, to do the siege engine if he's got more armies to spare. So there's some real, um, there's some ways to kind of modify luck here and, 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 and uh, maybe get some advantages. And also, too, some of the cards you get that you will choose, uh, you can choose through that kind of drafting process, can also mitigate some of the things in combat as well as do other things as well. I like the sugar and spice aspect of the event cards. I think that's fun. I think the, 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 the kingdom card that you can play as kind of a mini empire. That's cool. That gives you some kind of unexpected advantages. And then, of course, just some of the dirty tricks you can play with the other event cards are, are, are good. For instance, in the, in the video you're watching, uh, my friend Drew was Rome, and he had built up the, 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 the Roman Empire, and he built a fort, which is something else you can do is build up forts. He built up a fort in Rome. He, had, he was going to hold that thing come hell or high water. Well, when I come through as, like, I don't know, the Huns or something like that, um, I had an event card that I could play and just said, you can take the space without combat. And I played that on him, and he, it was much to his chagrin. Um, but we, we, you know, we, we played this game, and very quickly, once you figure out the dynamics, which are very easy, this is a very easy game to learn, and like I say, that was maybe what I was kind of leery of was I started it, but what I found is it's so quick, and I mean, relatively speaking, you know, it's about an hour and a half-ish or so, but it's so quick in the way it plays, and it's so intuitive 
you pick it up really quickly, and it's fun. It's just like, okay, okay, I gotta get more points. I want to go here. I want to go here. I want that resource. I want that resource. What do I want? What do I want to commit there? Do I want to lay siege and just burn armies in this one area? Is it that important, or do I want to expand another way? So there's choices here, and that's really good too. Also with the drafting, which empires do I want? I'm looking at the board, kind of looking where would me grabbing an empire be the most effective, or do I want a kingdom, or do I want some cool event that's going to help me in combat, which I know I'm going to need in the game. So again, there's some choices here. This is a light game to be sure. To me, it's a fairly light game, but it is fun. I really enjoyed this. Uh, frankly, I like this better than I thought I was going to. Um, I thought, I thought it, you know, it, I thought it was light, but I thought maybe, ah, you know, maybe it'll be fun. Maybe it'll be okay. But I really did enjoy it. I had a blast with this. We played with four players. I like to try this with six because I think that gets really nasty. And that's the thing. This is a mean game. It's a mean game when you're trying to just go and just, just drive through these other empires that people work so hard to build, and that's cool, and I like that too. Now, all that's cool. That's the mechanics of the game, and that's cool. But just at a thematic level, this idea of watching the world's empires rise and fall is really cool. Now, I remember, like I said, back in the day when I was thinking, oh, this looks interesting, that mechanic seemed weird to me. Oh, you're not just playing a an empire, you're playing multiple empires over time. I'm like, well, how does that work? That's weird. Um, but it's so fun, and it's thematic the way. Like I said, the, the British get naval advantages like like they would, you know? And then you've got, like I say, like the Celts and, and the Huns who don't have capitals when they start because they're nomadic peoples. I mean, that's cool. And, but and just certain advantages that, that each race gets, it's, it's just juicy. It's fun. Um, I really had a lot of fun with this game. I really enjoyed it. So the recommendation for History of the World from Z-Man Games is buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer, and you know, history of the world's got me thinking, maybe I should learn more about this stuff. Maybe I should, I don't know, get a PhD in history. The mighty titan in a battle most exciting Made a trident for Poseidon And helped me choose his bolts of lightning Lightning Ooh. Okay. This is starting out well <laughs> <laughs>